Um, I kind of thought when we, when we finished building this, that that pipe level was too low. It needed to be taller. Yeah, this is the junk I let my brother get me into because he wants an old rotten well house out here in the mud. We're gonna get stuck. Good thing we got a skid steer here. It's a good thing. You're gonna get us stuck. Wish I had the keys to that and I just crushed the well house. What's up guys it's daniel from arms family homestead and i told you guys the other day i was waiting on an implement and uh, it has arrived so this is a woods um pss 60 it's a precision seeder for planting all kinds of different grasses crops basically any seed that you'd want to put in a pasture uh food plots lots of different things i first showed you guys this back when um when we were at the national farm machinery show in louisville what is it, Earl? You want to talk to him about it too? Hmm? You want to tell everybody what we got? And I told you guys back then when I was at the show that they were just waiting on a waiting on one to come available. Well, this is the exact uh, machine that we looked at at the National Farm Machinery Show. This is the one they were using as a demo. It still got some seed in there where they were showing, you know, um, they were showing Houston how to adjust it and all that stuff, which they showed hundreds of people. But it still got seed left over from that. So. Uh, I don't know the first thing about this yet. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I've watched a bunch of videos on it, talked to the folks at, at Woods, but uh, I reached out to Woods through Instagram or Facebook or something several months ago and kind of told them what I was looking for, kind of told them what I was wanting to do and uh, see if they were interested in partnering with our YouTube channel. So this is a, they're not paying me for anything, but uh, they did send us this as a demo. It's on like a one year one year deal and we'll see how it goes from there so we want to overseed a lot of our pastures replant some of the places that the drought has just pretty much destroyed and uh, overgrazing has destroyed uh, we need we need grass for our animals we need to uh, one of the main things i really want to do with this is to put in food plots for the wildlife for deer and turkeys and all that stuff in the fall we'll put in you know cool season grasses wheat oats um ryegrass different things and in the spring you know we can do different different spring plots this thing will plant anything from teeny tiny little clovers it's got a native seed grass box on it all the way up to things like corn and soybeans and I, it's not a it's not actually a seed drill in my opinion it's more of a uh it does cultivate let me just show it to you I, i'm not an expert on this i'm gonna have to learn it and uh tell you guys as i go we're not going to be putting it to use today it has been raining for the last several days it's beautiful today but it's too muddy to try to plant anything so let's take a look at this thing so first off it is a three-point hitch implement it doesn't really match my tractor very well it's kind of burnt orange i don't know woods mm. you guys may may not be familiar with woods with the planters but woods are very well known for their bat wing mowers to pull behind a tractor you know the style of brush hog that folds up anyways three point hitch attachment and it's got a set of disc 
to uh, break up the soil a little bit and they're adjustable you can set the how aggressive you want these and then like i said three different seed boxes for three different types of seed native cool season i'm sorry native grasses they have to have a different kind of agitator things like um blue stem and big blue stem little blue stem lots of native grasses are are different uh kind of seeds and then the middle box is cool season cereal grains that's where you'd put like um your uh wheat oats stuff like that there's a chart of a lot of the different things you can plant and so there's where the demonstration seeds left over and then your legumes and small seeds so it's like uh uh clovers and things like that so you can actually plant with multiple seed boxes at the same time if you set it up just right so um after the disc so after you disc up the soil then you've got this big roller with teeth on it that kind of makes a divot in the ground and your first seed box the seeds would fall right here they'd come out and fall right um i don't know if it's right behind that or right in front of it earl hey do you need attention today anyways first your uh your roller is going to be right there and then behind the roller you can set this up a couple different ways so here's a couple different options these tubes for uh, this rear seed box you can set them up so that the seed falls down in front of that big roller or behind so different seeds have to be planted at different depths and if you want it a little planted a little shallower you'd put it back here so that it doesn't fall in front of that and get pushed down into the soil and then uh so either you can put it behind or you can push your tubes up in front and then after it goes through that uh the tine roller which is actually what drives all the gears and everything uh the last part's a cultipacker to kind of pack your seed bed after you're done so guys like i said this is brand new to me i don't know the first thing about it yet um gonna have to learn how to use it but i look forward to putting a bunch of seeds in the ground on not only this property but over at mill creek you know and, and aside from just planting um different grasses to improve our hay pasture and uh, our grazing pastures there's you know a lot of things i want to do like uh, a lot of stuff for the wildlife so like uh sunflower fields there's a lot of people plant a lot of sunflowers for uh doves and things for dove season but man turkeys there's all kinds of different crops you can plant to improve habitat for turkeys and deer and just all kinds of stuff and even i've even thought about doing some areas in uh wildflowers you know just maybe not an entire field but like like a 10 foot strip 12 foot strip down along the edge of a fence or something for a couple hundred yards if you had a say a 200 yard long by 10 or 15 yard wide swath of wildflowers can you imagine how much that would do for the bees and the pollinators and things and it'd be really pretty so anyways look forward to seeing that a lot on the channel over the next year or so i've got to learn how to use it first and uh i don't know we'll see but i think that's really going to help improve our pasture our hay and our uh, food plots for the wildlife Oh, and I didn't, I didn't mention, not only will this help me out, the main reason I, I opted for the native grass seed box on there is because Dusty at Cross Timbers Bison wants to plant a bunch of his bison pastures in uh, native grasses. The bison do a lot better uh, probably on a native forage with what they're you know built to eat instead of things that, that have been imported and things. But anyways, Dusty will be able to use it for his bison herd and just all kinds of stuff. So anyways not anything else on the cedar today but huge thanks to woods for working with us on this deal i'm excited to put it to use but i've got 50 other things to do i've got to run over to the mill creek property i want to check out the pond because you guys saw how much it flooded here well we probably got three plus four inches of rain at mill creek also and i haven't been over to see the pond but i guarantee you that thing's overflowing right now and i need to put out some mineral for the deer um, we're going to put out some some minerals for them because it's starting to green up the bucks have dropped their antlers they most of them have all shed their antlers from this past year they're going to restart start regrowing antlers soon so they need their mineral and uh i need to go pick up the skid steer it's over at the merch property so it's going to be a busy day but i gotta get started
Um, this pond. The pond's full, guys. And apparently we got a lot of rain over here as well. Um, wow. I, uh, the pond's a lot bigger than what it was last time I was here. And it's a lot bigger and flooded off into more of the north end of the pond than I ever thought it would. Check this thing out. We'll walk back around there, but it uh flooded way back into the timber. And it looks like, I don't know if you can tell on video, but it looks like water actually might have came through the emergency spillway here a little bit. I'm not gonna say a ton, but uh, water must have been coming into the pond faster than what the spillway pipe could handle. And that's why you have an emergency spillway. It, doesn't, it didn't flood through here by any means, but holy moly, this pond is bigger than it was. So it definitely got up higher than the spillway pipe. And I can tell that by, look how much debris is on the bank. So the water level's down here now, but at, at maximum height, the water level was up here. So the ponds dropped quite a bit, which would put it going out the emergency spillway quite a bit. And uh, obviously the water was coming in much faster than the spillway pipe can handle. But goodness, this pond got big. And I see a problem. So there's the spillway pipe, and do you see how much debris is built up on the top of it? Um, the pond's definitely full. It's still running over into the spillway pipe right now. It's basically we are at uh, maximum capacity, where this would be full pool 100%. It's just barely flowing over into the spillway pipe, and at that rate, it's uh, flooded way back into the timber which I knew when it was full it would because you could see water marks on those trees before. Um, but a lot of people ask me why I didn't put some sort of wire grate over the top of the spillway pipe. And that's exactly why right there. Uh, it's not clogged up by any means. Water's still getting through there. But I, I, I wasn't here when it rained, but I, I don't have a rain gauge here, but I'm guessing probably three to four inches of rain and this pond is fed by two separate not creeks but just ditches that run from one comes from a county road on this way and one comes from a county road on this side and obviously it carried more water than what that pipe could handle because the water level was a good i mean elevation wise from where it's at now to there's probably a foot and a half so let's say 18 inches over the top of the spillway pipe and that's crazy that's a lot of water i it's a good thing <laughs> this thing was designed right and had that emergency spillway so water probably went around that side of the dam and i'm betting water went around this side of the dam too I haven't made it down there but um i kind of thought when we when we finished building this that that pipe level was too low it needed to be taller based off of what where the water would hit on the dam because to me it seems like it's a long ways down the dam well it was another foot and a half or so higher i mean the water line was up here our dam is safe it's not going anywhere i will say that so um wow there's a lot of water in here so we're over on the far end of the dam and it definitely doesn't look like water went out over here um i really wasn't sure how all this would pan out when we built it the way the the dam kind of curves around here and i couldn't figure out why it was done that way and i thought well maybe it's kind of like another spillway but it looks to me more like water's coming in here now that i can kind of see it with a little bit of water on it um obviously water's coming down out of the trees there and comes down in i thought it would go out this way it's just hard to tell without shooting the grade, but water definitely 
did not go out of the pond this way it was coming in the pond and off the neighbor's place so there's a fence right here i don't own that side of the fence but water was definitely coming off the neighbors into the pond and not out and around here so it's good to know and while we're here on the dam this is a perfect place to use that seed drill uh, that precision cedar it's not really a drill precision cedar from woods is across the top of the dam and put some good grass in to stop the erosion if you guys remember back during the winter i came over and spread out a bunch of uh wheat and oats just kind of a cool season mix and it is growing in here and kind of helping stop some of the erosion so that's good but it will be good to get you know bermuda grass or something across the top of the dam with a good root system so that it doesn't erode over time so it looks like uh no fresh sign of the beaver i don't know where he disappeared to i didn't trap him i don't know maybe he found him a beaver girlfriend and left our pond alone for a while but i can hear water running you can see it's actually flowing out of the pipe just a little bit so the pipe's not clogged up by any means there's just all that debris pile on top but everything's doing its job i don't know if you'll be able to tell on video but there's the the spillway where it would come around and uh, it all washed down here and there's debris piles everywhere so a ton of water went around i mean you can see i don't know all the grass is laid down and it's all washed out through here but that pond caught a lot of water i see you trying to hide there Another one. I'll take that. Well, I didn't come out here planning on finding a bunch of morel mushrooms today. It was pretty chilly last night and I didn't think they'd be up. But I'm getting more than my hand can hold and I see another one right over there. Looks like we're gonna be eating some mushrooms tonight. Figured while I was here, give Buck, the previous owner, a call and let him come out and check out the pond and see if he can find some mushrooms. So he's down there in the woods looking for mushrooms and I'm gonna go put out some deer mineral and check on a few trail cameras and things. Well, <laughs> I was gonna come get this camera. I don't think I can get to it. It was uh, out in the open. And now, <laughs> it's in a foot of water. I don't have rubber boots. Luckily, it's elevated. Guess I won't be putting out any mineral in that site. That site's now uh, in the pond. <laughs> Gosh, that brush pile is usually high and dry. So there's the, the ditch that feeds this pond runs back through there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but man, one of the ditches that feeds it anyways. Oh well, let's go put some mineral out somewhere else.
Well, <clears throat> spring is here. Mushrooms are out. It's greening up. I love this time of year. Still getting really cool at night, but that's all right. Got all the chores done over here. Got the mineral out for the deer. Buck came over, found a few mushrooms. Said he found enough that uh, his wife can saute them up with his bacon and eggs in the morning. Never had morel mushrooms for breakfast, but I can't say that it's a bad idea. So I'm going to head over to uh, the merchandise property and load up the skid steer, take it to the house. I don't like leaving that thing sitting that close to the highway. It just seems a little uh, too enticing for someone to vandalize things. So, And there's not much else I can do with it there. We've got everything pretty well cleaned up for the most part. I think uh, my brother's wanting some help. Since I got a trailer, he's wanting to load up the old well house, see if we can load it up and haul it over to his house. And then, uh, yeah, I don't know. Figure out what we're gonna do. Yeah, this is the junk I let my brother get me into because he wants an old rotten well house out here in the mud. We're going to get stuck. Good thing we got a skid steer here. It's a good thing. You're going to get us stuck. Wish I had the keys to that and I just crushed the well house. Yeah, that's a great idea. Great idea. Hey. What? You ought to back out on up some because you may need that hose back in. They said you got killed, right? Hmm. Oh, well, let's see if we can get out of here without getting stuck. Yeah. Well, you could pick the ball. Right? <laughs> this was your idea. No, I, I came to get my machine. Yeah, you said, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah. It's a dang good thing all we had to do was cross the highway. I don't know how I got out of there without getting stuck. Couldn't really get out and move the camera around and show you guys. Uh, not our greatest idea, but that's what brothers are for, right? To talk you into doing things you shouldn't be doing. Really? A rotten well house. <laughs> Needs something to put his lawnmower in that he got from that garage that doesn't run. Push on it. Just slide it off. <laughs> I was. I can. Uh, huh? I, I can drop the trailer. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Maybe it's too much of a fine stand on that. Oh, it's probably got a lot of weight on it. Of it's on the ground? Oh, no. Oh, you're not on the ground at all. <laughs> you left two before. Right here. Right over by a barrel. 
I didn't get a no two projectors out of the house. have to document this Houston your sister's out here playing with you having fun to my surprise <laughs> Good board, guys. Hi, Jesse what are you doing little girl hmm how are you RJ, I don't think you quite understand the term donkey poodle isn't literal. We're not literally trying to make donkey poodles. Yeah, you can get him. Tell him to get off your back. Hey, RJ. Did you have a good day today? I did. It's been busy. Hmm. Hey, I think you're too close. Hmm. Well, busy day. Busy day. Got a lot done. And uh, it's just, it's it's a weird balance trying to figure everything out these days. <clears throat> everything used to just be right here. And uh, with purchasing other properties and expanding our businesses and, and doing different things, it's hard to juggle everything. Um, but that's all right. I enjoy it. I enjoy it 100%. I can't imagine doing anything else at this point in my life right now and uh hopefully <laughs> in the near future we'll get that cedar out here and do some overseeding and some pastures and get some grass you know because it is green other places the uh, donkeys and stuff still have the back pasture back there the gates open but they're up here since i i fed this evening but anyways got a lot done helped my brother out for some reason he decided he needed that well house that was completely falling down eat up by termites Luckily, we didn't get stuck, which we had this there if we did get stuck, but still, could have been a mess. But there's no better way to end the evening than sitting down here, hanging out with RJ. Been hanging out with, with RJ and Jesse. Look at this guy. Are you, are you getting, 
more friendly, more curious. Hmm? Hmm? Look at this. Are you giving me a kiss on the lip? I mean, on the cheek? Hmm? No kisses on the lips. But you can give me a kiss on the cheek. Hmm? You sound like your daddy. You know that? You sound like Rufus. So, anyways, back where we started today, huh, Earl? So, guys, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. You guys have a great day. And as always, we'll see you on the next video.